Inner Voice, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Inner Voice show, a heartfelt chat with Dr. Fujian Zain. And here I am, Dr. Fujian Zain, and I'm a psychotherapist, author, and the originator of the Awareness Integration Theory. Our conversation, our podcast is about what matters most in our life our mind, our thoughts, feelings, actions, relationships, and our fulfillment in this beautiful journey of life. For all of you beautiful souls who've been asking about my latest books, here they are. Actually, the latest, latest one is um, what you can see, uh, the inten Intentional Parenting, A Practical Guide to Awareness Integration Theory, I wrote this book with two of my wonderful friends and co-authors, Dr. Nicole Jafari and Dr. Eileen Manukian. They are um, both experts in their field of child development and human development. And um, we wrote the book in a way for anyone who's a teacher, who's working with children, who's a parent, who's a grandparent who's working with children, going from um, infancy all the way to young adulthood, chapter by chapter, you get to see all of the development of cognitive development, emotional development, and going through the awareness integration theory through each stage and kind of sharing with you um, how each stage can work and uh, what can you do in order for their emotional and cognitive abilities to be grown much, much faster. For all of you who are therapists or coaches and want to learn about the awareness integration therapy this book is for you clear the past create a new future and live a fulfilled life now this goes through the nine principles and uh, six phases of awareness integration theory and teaches you how to apply it and for all therapists and coaches who want to become certified in awareness integration theory this is the book for you and call me and contact me we are setting up 2023 uh, courses and classes and supervision uh, for everyone who wants to be certified. And if you are certified, you will be placed on our awarenessintegration.com. And since uh, our app is coming and launching in December, Fujian app, which will have awareness integration uh, method in the app, we are going to need more of you. The therapists and coaches across the world um, who can assist and, and help people who are going through the app and would like more um, assistance or more support uh, than going through a self-help app. So I think this would be an amazing opportunity for you to be able to do that. So um, contact me if you are interested in, in doing that. Today in this episode, I chat with Odile Remred. Um, it's a wonderful conversation. I really loved it. This is going to be about their latest book, Change What Happened to You. She co-authored co this with her husband, Steve. Odile and Steve Remred are mindset coaches specializing in emotions and subconscious. Um, and um, Odile is uh, got her... Um, uh, education uh, through neuroscience and her husband Steve is a psychotherapist so together uh, they got this going a Rembrandt method before marrying and becoming coaches Odile and Steve both struggled with anxiety depression suicidal ideation and debilitating patterns combining Steve's master degree in psychotherapy with Odile's knowledge and training in neuroscience they created the Rembrandt method together they empower others to create deep and permanent life change through memory transformation. You can uh, learn more about them um, through their website, The Remnant Method. And if you want uh, a copy of their book, you go to theremnantmethod.com forward slash podcast gift. Um, I'm, I hope you enjoy the conversation as much as I did. Now, subscribe to my podcast and my YouTube channel. And um, connect with me through my website, fujonzane.com, or any of the social medias that you are a part of. If you like to work um, with self-help book, get my book, um, Life Reset, which uh, goes through 
the whole process um, in different areas of life, the awareness integration path to create the life you want, life reset. And, um, you know, uh, that would support you to go step by step through the method. And um, when we've done um, the self-help method in Cal State Long Beach, where um, I teach, and we've done a lot of research in with the uh, with four classes actually, where other professors were, uh, were uh, teaching. And the research that we did, it showed us that we just by self-help, uh, they brought down 64% depression and anxiety. So it really helps um, for you to really work through uh, the awareness and then the integration of who you were in the past and then looking at the future and creating a model for you that you could take from every aspect of life and moving forward with it. I won't hold you any longer. I think um, you'll be excited to hear uh, Odile Redmond. So here she is. Well, Odile, welcome to the show. I am excited for your book, Change What Happened to You. Um, so welcome. I know that you and Steve uh, together wrote this book. And uh, tell us, first of all, um, what got you to want to create the Rembrandt Method? Uh, between the two of you, I know in your book you share a little bit, but can you share a little bit for our audience? Of course. Thank you. So first of all, Dr. Pujan, thank you for having me. Um, it's a, I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, well, so we actually uh, started our journeys before we met. And uh, for me, I, toward the end of 2015, I was uh, 51 years old, divorced, depressed, uh, renting a room in a shared house in England and cleaning other people's houses and still unable to pay my bills. And I'd had a lifetime of emotional, uh, physical and financial struggle. And I tried everything I would, you know, every modality, every book that came out, I would threw myself into it and tried everything. And I couldn't understand why I wasn't breaking that repetitive pattern of struggle. Uh, despite all my efforts. And it felt like no matter what I did, there was something holding me back and keeping me stuck. Toward the end of 2015, I discovered what that was, and it was um, childhood memories. So within the first, um, the, sort of during 2016, within the first few months of 2016, I was not only able to pay my bills, I and happier and healthier, but I was traveling internationally. And uh, 2017, February 2017, I met the love of my life, Steve, and we got married in the August of 2017. And I now live in America and I do what I love. And I am a completely different person with different patterns now. So I was, of course, I'm still me, but I've got very different self image and worldview, which of course has a knock on effect on everything. Um, in 2019, I ended up owning three of the rental properties I used to clean back in 2015. And um, my passion now is making sure that other people know about this, because this is something that I wish I'd known of before, of course. And I feel that if people at least know the information and they know how to make these changes, then they have the option and, and, and that'll, that empowers them. Absolutely. Now, Steve has a degree in um, psychology and he was a psychotherapist and you are, um, you studied neuroscience. And then uh, the most important factor is you studied you and he studied him. Correct. And that, that's what brought up a lot of the conversation. And you talked about not only your uh, struggles, but also you had a struggle of a, f a whole family system who were going through a struggle. So it wasn't just about a personal struggle. I mean, we live in a community and we kind of take their trauma uh, with us and generational trauma that comes with us that kind of gets stuck and put us in a path of automatic. And it seems like um, to kind of look at what's going on with the automatic and having the ability to shift. 
So you and Steve created the Rembrandt method, which has three pillars. Um, so I'd like us to share a little bit about each pillar, if that's okay with you. Of course, yes. So uh, I use the analogy of driving, if you're driving somewhere. So if, if you want to, uh, whatever you want to achieve, if you imagine that as your destination, so whether that's, you know, emotional health or physical health or financial health or whatever it is you want, that's your destination. And you're going to drive from wherever you are now to that destination. And so if you wanted to drive from Chicago to LA and you didn't know how to drive a car, of course you wouldn't get very far. So the first pillar is learning to drive. And uh, the equivalent of that is learning to control our own brain and body chemistry. So the chemicals that create emotions and affect the brain, we can we have more control over those than we than we think usually. So once you've learned that, once you've learned to drive, then you want to make sure that your GPS is set for the destination you want to get to. So if you drove from you want to drive from uh, Chicago to L.A. and your GPS was still set for Chicago, then, of course, every time you start heading toward L.A., your GPS would turn you around and, and guide you back to Chicago. And the equivalent of that is the implicit childhood memories. So the, um, the, the memories that in our childhood that form the evidence, the structure of evidence that proves our self-image and worldview, who we are, how the world works, and how to react. Um, so generally the brain is, as we go about our day as adults, the brain is constantly keeping us in alignment with that self-image and worldview. And that's why we have these automatic unconscious reactions and patterns and uh, behaviors and that. So changing those to match the end destination changes your self-image and worldview to a more empowered uh, state so that then, then getting to your destination is automatic. And the third pillar is what we call zero tolerance. And that is the equivalent of staying on the road. So, it, you know, mostly what happens is we're driving along and we hit a storm or a detour. We pull over, get out of the car, spend time in the storm going, ah, oh, this is a terrible, I'm never going to get there. And we treat that as the end destination instead of keeping going through the storm to end up at the destination. And the equivalent of that is when we encounter challenges and um, you know, disappointments and delays, we tend to buy into them as if, well, this is, this is all there is, or this means I can't achieve something because we can't see around corners. And instead it's to remind yourself, this is just a storm along the way, keep going. You may have to slow down. So visibility may not be great. You may need to slow down. You may need to take a break, but it doesn't stop you from getting to where you want to be. So those are the three pillars. Beautiful. So everyone, um, the book, Change What Happened to You, How to Use Neuroscience to Get the Life You Want by Changing the Negative Childhood Memories by Odile and Steve Remrit. Um, when you talk about, um, I love this, uh, the sentence you guys used, which was uh, negative thoughts and feelings are like cockroaches. No matter how small and apparently harmless they may be on their own, they are sure to be a sign of more to come. Um, so part of the conversation that you and Steve bring in this book is how to recognize your negative thoughts and how to recognize where they're coming from and then look at how to be you know to to shift the construct of where they're coming from and then you offer also um how to change the negative beliefs to the positive beliefs in the book so share a little bit more about that absolutely yes so um as i said the implicit childhood memories are um proving who we are and how the world works and so changing those is like changing the gps and as you know uh, neuroscience has discovered that mem not only can memories be changed they're already changing automatically and updating as we you know as we live kind of, yeah. as we experience life and so we can change them intentionally so for example um, someone who, well, one of my beliefs, which was, I'm not good enough. I went, you know, I did all the affirmations. I uh, tried to change that belief consciously. 
Um, you know, I am good enough. I reasoned it. But as I was doing that, what I discovered later is that the unconscious part of my brain was referring to my childhood experiences that prove I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so it just continued producing those chemicals that create those feelings and those reactions. So once I changed those childhood memories, and what we're doing is we're changing the implicit memory so um, that we, so that's the unconscious memory. So we change the part, the, the memory that the unconscious part of the brain is referring to, but we maintain the conscious memory. So the equivalent is you change the GPS coordinates, the GPS accepts the new destination while you as the driver still know where you are and where you've been before. So um, as we change those, in, so an example of implicit memory is if you look outside and you notice it's raining, how do you know it's rain? How do you know it's not dangerous? How do you know it's wet? And if you walk out into it, you'll get wet. And most of us can't remember how we learned about rain, but it's coming from implicit memory, from experience rather than an objective fact. And our as we go about life, everything is about implicit memory. So, um, and that's also why different people have different reactions to the same events or the same circumstances. And it's all because of, of their childhood. So changing and we use the brain chemistry exercise which i'm happy to take you all through um in a minute if you'd like because it's very short we use the brain chemistry exercise to bring down the uh, stress chemicals that are attached to that negative memory and then to rewrite it and then you practice the new one and the result is that then you're going about your day and your brain the unconscious part of your brain is automatically referring to the fact that you're good enough that you're safe, that you deserve, that you're loved, and all of the other um, foundational pieces of empowering uh, data that, that you know that support what you want to achieve in your life now. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm ready. Take me. Okay. <laughs> Happily. All right. So for this exercise, you'll need a subject. So um, someone or something you love. So it could be a pet or an animal that's not your pet, but you think they're cute like elephants or um, a person, as long as there's no negative attachment. So no guilt or longing or, or uh, uh, regret or wishing or anything like that. So just love. And if you can't think of an animal or a person, you can use a place or an activity. So the beach or gardening or that kind of thing. Have you got something? Yes, my dog. My oh. companion is, oh. is um, Mr. Spock. Oh, perfect. Absolutely. Yes. Mr. Spock. Mr. Uh, Spock. <laughs> so let's do this. And, and of course, the listeners uh, can, can um, follow along. So take a deep breath, close your eyes. And I want you to start by thinking of your favorite color. And if you don't have a favorite, that's okay. Just pick one you like. And imagine being surrounded by that beautiful color. And feel the feeling of that color. Focus on how that color feels. It's the most beautiful shade of that color you've ever seen. Very good. And now I want you to imagine your subject, that animal, person, place, or activity standing in front of you. And imagine holding them in your arms in a hug. And notice the feeling, the physical feeling of love in your chest or solar plexus. You can also drill down to all the reasons you love this person, animal, place, or activity. Now imagine that feeling in your chest or solar plexus as a ball of light or energy. And imagine it spreading down to your toes, up to the top of your head, and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy. Very good. And now imagine that light or energy radiating out from you and filling the whole room you're in. And you can open your eyes. How is that for you? Sweet. <laughs> Good. And so what we were doing there is literally as you're thinking about your, your, the colors to start with, and then the thing Here. you love, 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's Spock. Mr. Spock. Ah, oh, he's gorgeous. Isn't he's he just face. all love? Beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect subject. And so as you, you know, as we're thinking of the color and the, the subject and hugging a subject, the light, all of that, those are all connections between neurons in the neocortex of the brain. And each connection is triggering matching chemicals. So as we're connecting those, um, uh, making those connect, neural connections, as we think of all of that stuff that we love, the brain is starting to trigger the production of endorphins, serotonin, oxytocin. So chemicals that make us feel good. And um, as we continue to do that, of course, it increases. So what I want to say as well for the listeners, if you didn't, if it wasn't very strong or you couldn't feel it at all, even don't worry about it because it depends on how, how high the level of stress chemicals is in your system already. Because stress chemicals are stronger than feel-good chemicals because they're for our survival. So that's why it's easier to feel bad than to feel good. So it takes it can take rep repetition. So just like getting physically fit, where if you haven't run before, if you get off the couch and start running, you probably don't get won't get very far. You need to do it regularly um, and, and consistently for your body to build the stamina and the muscles and make those physiological changes. And this is the same. So every time you practice, and you can see it doesn't take long. So you practice it as much as you can, even if you can't feel it yet, and drill down into the reasons you love that person, animal, place, or activity that will make more neural connections that will increase the level of those feel-good chemicals. And it gets easier and, uh, and stronger as you practice more, just like getting physically fit. So when you're um, when you're looking at your own life, because sometimes when we've gone through the path, it's um, not only from a um, you know a theoretical place, but when we've gone through the path and gone through the steps, it's um, and sharing from that angle, it really resonates. So um, as you have gone through what you shared, um, that the thought process and the emotional process of I'm not good enough had held you back so much. And then knowing that as you went through this process, that those doors opened for you and, you know, obviously you show it in your results and your results of not only from a financial perspective, but um, you know, your, the quality of your marriage, creating the book, sharing all of that. There's a point where you said, um, it's in, uh, you, there's a realization, which is your pillar one. And then that realization then changes, you go back and change where the source of that thought process is. Right. But, and then from the source of the, the thought process, after you find the source, and obviously, as you said, um, every time we go back to look at a memory, we're automatically changing it anyway. So it's now it's like looking at, are you looking at the same memory from the same angle which you're going to keep remembering yourself as the victim or you're going to keep looking at you're going to come on and look at it from a different angle right and um and then when you look at it from a different angle you uh create new stories lines there right and as you create new storylines what i'm sensing from what you say is that as you coming to create the new storyline you also want to practice what you just showed me and, and practice with me how to bring the physiology of your body to calm down from this stress level which the old memory brought to the new um, level so that as you're installing kind of the new type of um, um, storyline that the new type of storyline resonates with um, um, you know, a calm body, let's say, um, a, a happy body, a, a way of being. So that's how you're associating the new memory line with your physical body. Is that what I'm hearing from you? Right. Yes, absolutely. And because uh, thoughts are connections between neurons in the neocortex of the brain, and those connections trigger matching chemicals. So to put it very simply, negative thoughts trigger stress chemicals, uh, positive thoughts trigger feel good chemicals as we think that's why we when we do this process we don't want to spend time in the negative memory because every time every moment that you're thinking about the negative memory those connections between neurons will start to produce 
produce those stress chemicals. So the process we use is is a back and forth um, thing where we think about the negative memory just for a moment. We dip our toe in the hot bath. We don't want to get in. Notice how high the uh, the level of um, negative emotions is and then press pause on it and go to this exercise that I've just taken you through. So we're spending more time filling our system with endorphin, serotonin and oxytocin, staying in that calm, feel good state. And then as we connect the neurons of the negative memory again, we notice again just a little bit how strong are the negative emotions. And we do this back and forth until we bring down the stress chemicals to the um, to the extent that you, th as you think of the negative memory, the negative emotions aren't there anymore. So there's no negative emotions. And then you can rewire that memory by imagining it differently and then establish it with repetition. It reminds me of the desensitization, systematic desensitization. That's what we do with fear. That's what we do with uh, uh, when we're working or with any type of uh, phobias, in a sense, from, you know, from a behavioral to constantly go back and forth with systematic desensitization. I've used that also with hypnosis, which you go back and forth and, and create that until these two kind of connect with a new level of memory. And you're yeah. saying go back and forth in, in creating that together. Okay. That's it. And then uh, when we change the memory, we want to make it uh, the, to the opposite, positive and empowering. So, And we want it to be as amazing as possible. So things I say to clients is there are no memory police. <laughs> so no one and no one even needs to know you're doing it. So this is just, you know, in the privacy of your own mind. Um, and there are no limits to the special effects or the budget inside your mind. And the key reason this works is because the unconscious part of the brain can't tell the difference between reality and imagination, can't um, use logic or reason, and can't judge something as unrealistic. So, you know, you'll have noticed when you watch a movie like um, you know, Jurassic Park or, um, or Harry Potter, we get fully engaged. We feel all the emotions as if what we're watching is real even though it's unrealistic. And that's because while we consciously know it's just a movie, the unconscious part of the brain is triggering the chemical response in the body that creates those you know, feelings of fear or joy or, or love or whatever is happening in the movie. And so that's why this works. So once you've created those new memories, so for example, um, if you were bullied in school, you'd want to end up with a new memory, not just that you weren't bullied, but you were the most popular kid in school. Everyone loved you. You won all the prizes. You were top of the class. You were in, you know, the first one to be picked on all the school teams, all the sports teams, that kind of thing. So you, and the, another reason for that, to make it that good, you know, exceptionally good, is because then you're adding a little bit of adrenaline to the feel good chemicals and the brain prioritizes memories with adrenaline attached to them for long term storage. So, and of course, that's for survival. Adrenaline is, is usually, you know, or, or is included in those fight, freeze, flight uh, combination of cocktail of chem chemicals. So adding in not just it was okay, but it was wonderful, gives that little bit of a, a, a encouragement to your brain, a signal to your brain to prioritize that for long-term storage. Um, everybody... Get the book, Change What Happened to You, How to Use Neuroscience to Get the Life You Want by Changing Your Negative Childhood Memories by Odile and Steve Remrin. Um, Actually, Odile is uh, giving us a gift, which um, is wonderful because you get to have your own copy of the book online if you go to... Um, where did they go? I just <laughs> it's okay. it's... Oh, the remred method.com the remred method.com uh, forward slash podcast gift. So if you go there, you will uh, be able to get the book and it's wonderful. Um, now I want to talk about your third pillar. Your third pillar is zero tolerance. You talked a little bit about, okay, when we get to a stormy place and we look at it and we kind of get stuck in it. And then, um, you know, then we got to pull through the storm. 
So from your methodology, how do you suggest for people to pull through the storm? Very good question. Thank you. Um, well, so we use this little exercise that I've just taken you through, but we also suggest uh, you know watching comedy, listening to music you love, going for a walk, listening to an uplifting audio book, playing a game, doing whatever feels good, listening to an uplifting podcast, things that feel good to you. The key, the reason we call it zero tolerance is because stress chemicals are stronger than feel good chemicals, the longer you leave it, the longer you ignore the, the negative emotions, the higher, it's like leaving a bath running, the higher the level of stress chemicals, and you get to a point where you there is no turning back, so you have to just then ride it out. The earlier you catch it, the easier it is to make that switch. So for example, um, if I notice that I'm starting to feel irritable or anxious, that's when I can, you, you can imagine a big pause button in your mind. Imagine pressing pause and going, okay, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to switch my focus now, connect different neurons to trigger feel good chemicals. And I will come back to this. And one of the main reasons this is so important is one of the things you know, very few people realize or, or understand is that one of the effects of stress chemicals on the brain is they it causes blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex of the brain where we do our cognitive thinking to the back of the brain for survival for the fight freeze flight state so it means that whenever we're feeling a negative emotion we literally can't think straight because we don't have access to that part of the brain and you know you may have noticed when you're triggered in an in an encounter with someone and um later it's only later you think of all the things you could have said or should have said and that's because while you were triggered in that moment the blood had drained from your prefrontal cortex and later on as the stress chemical the level of stress chemicals uh, reduced blood returned to that part of your brain and then you could start thinking again clearly and so that's why it's so important to catch it early to use the zero tolerance and switch your focus to whatever works for you um, that that you know, and it can be as simple as just focusing on a color you love. And if your mind wanders and goes back to the danger, because we're designed to focus on the danger, the brain is designed to um, focus on the bad stuff for survival. And as it does that, you can gently bring it back like your house training a puppy. You go, it's okay, I will come to that. But just for now, I'm just going to focus on this color. And then I will come back to that. So answering yourself, speaking to yourself as you would to someone else. You know, it's okay, we'll just do this first and then we'll get to that. I'm just releasing the handbrake before I press the accelerator. So how I hear you is that the when anything happens that gets our stress hormones up, one of the things is to look at, do I need to do anything right now? And if I don't need to, then I can kind of first, even if I need to do something, I need to understand that and think clearly. But the knowledge of I can't really think clearly to make any um, appropriate logical choice. Maybe I need to take maybe one minute, two minute and uh, sit through and consciously calm my body and brain down. Now, the calming of the brain down is you were using visualization. People can do it also with breathing exercises, meditation, anything that they could do. Visualization is works for me beautifully um and then for that it's like okay first arrange your body and chemicals in a way that you could calm it down so that your your frontal cortex can actually work and then go so what i'm hearing from you is almost like if the you know you walk into a room and it's dark you want to turn on the light and you're saying when you know when you go into a stress uh it's as if the front uh, frontal cortex the the light is off right so you got to turn it on and the only way you can turn it on is first to calm down your body because yes. your other parts kind of hijack it yes absolutely and then you bring it in and uh, then you make your decisions from a place that your body is calm versus you know only like flight and and um, freeze and and fight and from there then you can move forward and then that's how you can shift and you're saying the zero tolerance is that the minute you notice the negativity showing up that's when you need to um, become conscious of it because if you don't it just runs 
And the more it runs, the more you're flooded with um, stress hormones. And the longer it takes for you to obviously, you know, hose down all of those (laughs) and then come back and, you know, produce the other um, chemicals that are there. Right. And it takes just 60 to 90 seconds to change from stress chemicals to feel good chemicals. Mm -hmm. As long as you're keeping your focus off the negative and on the positive for that 60 to 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing, you were right when, you know, you said like just a minute or two, that's all it takes. As long as you, you know, what we usually do is we feel the negative emotions and then we think about whatever it is. And that, that triggers more. And each time, each thought, each connection between neurons is restarting that 60 to 90 second clock and pumping more stress, stress chemicals. So it, it doesn't take long to do. And it just needs to be that, you know, if your mind wanders, just bring it back to whatever it is you're doing to feel good for just 90 seconds, just a, a minute and a half. That's all it takes. Odile, anything we haven't shared that you really want people to know about your method, about the book, about your experience, about their future? (laughs) Well, I think that, um, you know, one of the things that I, one of the reasons I feel so passionate about this is uh, the information that um, childhood has such an impact on us. You know, uh, I say your childhood may be over, but your brain doesn't know that. That information is getting out there a lot more now. There are a lot of people who are doing amazing work with educating people for raising children and teaching children, um, you know, with that in mind. And my focus is on those of us who have missed that boat. (laughs) In other words, our childhood has already happened. And so we can't, you know, there's no uh, changing that we can't go back in time and change it. I want to get the message out that we can change it. You can literally change as far as the unconscious part of your brain is concerned. You can literally change what happened to you because the unconscious part of your brain will believe the new childhood, just like it believes a movie is real. And so I want, my message is that there is hope for those who feel like, Oh, it's too late for me. It's not. Luckily, it's not. No, oh, it's never too late. Right. Never too late. It could always change the chemistry of the brain and your view until the last minute that you're breathing, definitely. Yes. All right, everybody. How to use neuroscience to get your life uh, by changing your negative childhood memories. Change what happened to you by Odile and Steve Remrit. You can find them in um on their website and uh you can also get your book on their website um the remrettmethod.com and if you want the gift it's the remrettmethod.com forward slash podcast gift it was a joy to have you with us thank you so much dr fujan i had a wonderful time i've loved our conversation so thank you for having me here beautiful thank you so much for being with us from illinois and uh, for all of you who are out there create an amazing life for yourself and everyone around you and until next week bye-bye